tyranny and vanity. So what do I mean? And if this goes off, if this goes really astray, uh, if by the end of this episode none of this makes sense, I apologize. It's Saturday night. I'm trying to work through the last three, four hours, so it's fresh. But I've been thinking about this a lot. Power in itself is not an accomplishment. I don't think uh, getting to a position of power, uh, if it's done simply for the sake of that goal of uh, making it to a certain rank or a certain position, and I'm speak speaking primarily in the political uh, political sense, but it can trickle down to anything really. Um, but gaining power, I think, can be very irresponsible because uh, that is not in itself uh, something worth celebrating. Irresponsible in the sense that if you're a civil servant or if you're an elected official or if you're doing something in the name of improving uh, the well-being of society, and I'd like to think that that's the purest form of any election sort of pursuit. Um, power really doesn't mean much. Um, and an abuse of that power is too common in this country and common in many countries. Uh, it's common throughout history. But today, I mean, the whole notion of power bringing you access and what we got used to, which is, I think, the ugly side of this story, which is things like Wasta and uh, having authority just from a name or a position and being treated exceptionally well while the population is treated unfairly. Um, that's so uh, embedded, unfortunately, at the moment. And I think there are maybe many people within the old sort of establishment that are still uh, running the show, running in next year's elections, I think they have been forced to sort of step one or two or maybe three steps back and think twice in every move they make. I mean, you don't see these people out much. On occasion, you do. And uh, most of the time, it's newsworthy if they're seen in public and there's a very good chance that there will be a protest or people shouting at them to leave. So you don't see much of what you used to see, which is the celebrity status of uh, officials and uh, almost like a celebrity, separate celebrity uh, style of entertainment worship. Uh, that has diminished somewhat. So... I think that the fact that they can't do that that much is something good. And I think that is one form of the positive trend, wherever it is, that limited positive stuff. I think it's in there. I think people are beginning to realize that there is some uh, degree of reform that's necessary to stay in a rotting system. So you're seeing some cosmetic changes happening. You also see, and this is maybe an unpopular opinion, you see older parties in this country forcing themselves to reform to a degree, not all the way. Uh, there are competent ministers in this current government. Even among parties that are not deemed to be that sort of, uh, you know, they're not celebrated for reform, but uh, there are decent individuals who are on the right side of history in this current cabinet. I think that is already a good step. And we've seen good names emerge even before the October 17 uprising. So I think that you have talented people still showing up and still getting nominated by the old parties, that push to make more of those people emerge um, 
in any election outcome, in any cabinet, I think that is a goal and that should be pursued. But that is within the regime. And I think they're the counterweight within the regime against the thuggish authoritarianism uh, that we got used to. So that's tyranny. Vanity. There are people that uh, would rather gain sort of recognition and have a power trip without doing the hard work, sort of jumping to the top, running the show, jumping from organization to organization only to have access to authority and living in the spotlight. It's very vain. Vain and counterproductive. So if you have tyranny within the regime and you have vanity all over the place, even among the civil society crowd. And you know what? Let's say a bit of vanity is necessary. And let's say ego by default is a necessity. It's a critical, let's say, uh, it's an essential skill. Skill, it's not a skill. Trait. Characteristic to want to run for politics, especially in this country. Let's say you need a bit of it. Okay. Among these people are really, really hardworking, talented, and young citizens that want the best for this country. I believe this because I know them. Too many of them have been on the podcast, and uh, plenty of them I've sort of I'm friends with. So, and I think they are genuine. No reason to doubt their intentions. This is a educated guess that the majority of them, if not all of them, will lose next year if the elections are are happening, assuming they are. So then the question becomes, is it good to burn your name next year against the regime figures that many of them are expired, but some of them, some of them are beginning to move in a better direction. But let's just say the opposition crowd, let's say the overwhelming majority of them are more ambitious, more, more creative, and more, more determined. And they have a clean slate, and they should be given their chance. Is it worthy for them to lose just by putting their name out next year, but losing against a crowd that maybe they should easily win against? And if they do lose, is that in itself okay if it pushes the regime to keep reforming? So that these people that are, let's say they, they lose against the crowd that's fairly mediocre, and let's say some of them are beginning to do things the right way, if the spotlight is on them constantly, and that includes new people running against them, Maybe that in itself is a good thing, so that the regime is forced to reform regardless. Maybe that's actually, maybe that's a good step. But I'm worried about vanity being the force behind some people that uh, really just want attention. And I don't know if, uh, I mean, it can't be that everyone is running for next year's elections and it shouldn't be that way and uh i i don't know if i mean maybe a friend of mine who belongs to one of these opposition parties i'm not going to name him or the party had a private exchange and he's right i should say he or she is right they are right doesn't matter that it's you should start small don't even need to run next year Work within the smallest channels possible. Build long term. And then pursue, if not 2026, pursue 2030. I mean, or maybe even just skip next year and let this coming stretch be the building blocks. And the politicking and the really just building the base that clearly is not there yet. So that one day there's a maturity and you can compete 
And maybe by then, something which is, I think, existential at this point, that the regional temperature would have cooled and maybe Lebanon would be in a slightly better place by then. Because you don't want these people who are good now, you don't want them, if they win, you don't want them to not be able to do anything, given that the status quo hasn't changed. I mean, I can't imagine a reformer entering parliament next year having more capability than anyone who entered parliament the last 16 years. But that said, you want them there should the temperature cool down. It probably won't cool down now. And you don't want them to lose. So this is, this is the conundrum that I think of, which is, I don't know. By running next year and losing, is that okay if the regime is forced to reform? And if you're losing, can you pick up and try again? Clear, clearly you can. So accepting the loss, knowing that the road is very long, maybe that is the way to look at it. But jumping in just for the sake of it and f sort of relishing in this, I think it's false attention, um, letting a bit of psychosis into the story is never, never good. And also that combined with, I mean, this sort of dictatorial style of authority in this country. And I mean, it's like the micromanagement and the oppression of certain figures in this country is really, it's astounding. I don't know. I just uh, I want the good people to win long long term, and I don't want them to burn out, and I don't want them to uh, to lose for the wrong reasons. And uh, that's what I have in my mind on a Saturday night, past midnight. So thanks for letting me bring out an inner monologue two nights in a row. I appreciate it. Beep, beep.